Hi, I'm Adam from the Seismology Research Centre, here to talk to you about how we work out the location and magnitude of earthquakes. There's lots of fancy software that does it for us automatically, but it always needs to be reviewed by a seismologist. Back in the old days, only 40 years ago, most seismographs recorded wiggly lines on a drum of paper. Seismologists would analyse them with a microscope and draw circles on a map to estimate the location of the earthquake. When seismographs went digital in the 80s, this got a lot easier. Seismograms were clearer to read and computer programs could do all the maths to work out the location and magnitude for you. This is still the process used today, but it can be time consuming before you get a result. Notifications always need to be reviewed and data verified. When an earthquake occurs, waves of energy radiate from it like ripples on a pond. Let's see how that works. We're going to place an earthquake where those pins are. So first we're going to need a network of seismographs. So let's install some. There's four. So we have to look at the waveform traces. So let's pop those up and let's make the earthquake. So an earthquake generates two energy waves, a P wave, a primary wave, and a secondary wave. The P wave travels faster than the S wave. So as you can see, the P wave and the S wave have crossed the rust station, leaving a trace. And the P wave has just hit the wane station. Let's watch it travel across the rest of the network. The P wave now gets to the L station. S wave hits wane, then L, and then sometime later, it's the garage station. So seismologists are then left with these traces to try and work out where the earthquake was. So what they need to do is pick those P and S times from those waveforms. So here we've done that. We've marked the P and the S time and that correlates to a distance from that seismograph to the earthquake. Let's have a look at those distances now. The rust station was 29 kilometers from the earthquake, Wayne 42, L 52, and Gary 78. So let's take those distances back to the map and let's move those circles to where the stations are. As they move into place you'll see they all start to intersect at one place which is the earthquake location. The SRC has developed earthquake analysis software for almost 40 years with the heart of our observatory being a system we call EQ Server. This server pulls data in from dozens of seismographs from around our network and allows staff to see live data view automatic earthquake alerts, access data archives, and keep an eye on the health of our network. Harnessing the power and simplicity of the iPad, we've developed an app called QuickQuake, which allows you to connect to your EQ server, select your events, defer any waveforms that you don't want to use, select the perfect waveform, pick a PNS wave using the zoom features to get it as accurate as possible. Once you have picked a PNS wave, that station is plotted on the map with the earthquake at the distance that correlates to those P and S times. On the left, it's plotted in red at that distance, and all of the other stations in your network are plotted in black at the distance from that earthquake also. As you move the earthquake around that distance ring, once the earthquake is in the correct position, all of the waveforms line up nicely. We then view our report, and we can see exactly where this earthquake is. We can zoom in, change to other types of maps, and there you have it. QuickQuake is just another example of how the SRC continues to make data analysis simple and accessible and even fun. Download QuickQuake from the App Store.